YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my review for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers issue 118, The Darkest Day Event Continues. And this is one of my more favorite issues, honestly. It's almost, not necessarily a bottle episode, but in a way it's kind of like that because you kind of have a lot of the focus on the Rangers underneath the dome trying to escape Dark Spectre, trying to get in it because he's still basically weak to uncorrupted grid energy. There is some action going on, but it kind of is character driven. And that is something I really like. The two things that I've always highlighted that I really love about this run is how they've taken advantage of almost everything I've seen introduced in the main comics mythology, but also that they make time for nice character moments. Like we start off with an actual nice character moment between the two Trinis, which is just kind of cool to see with Drac and Trini offering main Trini advice about, you know, saying things to the one you love while they're around. And it's just kind of cool to get this juxtaposition of these two different Trinis on these different tracks in their lives. Like with this really cool shot of Zed kind of walking away and you see Red Omega Trini and Drac and Trini. And it's just honestly really cool. There's also a nice moment later with all the OG Omegas, which was just kind of nice to see. Another nice moment with Jason sort of offering advice to Bulk and Skull. Nice to just see his character again, because he's always been kind of a great mentor leader. Like seeing him in this civilian situation. Even a nice moment with Tommy and Kim reuniting him, feeling guilt. There's also a funny moment when he's fighting and like one of the Rangers insults him about him always failing, which was kind of funny, like it was a funny moment, but it also was just kind of true to like Tommy's struggle in finding his place in le as leader in this comic. Speaking of character moments, there's also tension between the Phantom Ranger and Kimberly, or Draken Kimberly, aka Ranger Slayer, as he doesn't really believe she's not fully corrupted still, and there's kind of a nice moment with that, and she's kind of like, I just don't have time for this stuff, like honestly. Also, really weird superficial side note, I'm just now noticing for the first time that the Draken Rangers have like this jaggedy monster mouth, which is kind of like a spin on the creeper lips that most Ranger helmets have, which I actually kind of like that detail. One of the big moments in this issue too is when Tommy arrives with Rita, because if you remember, we left off on kind of a cliffhanger with them, with her letting Tommy out after she was done being Dark Spectre's puppet, and you see them fighting alongside each other. Again, really cool shots in this issue, like that shot with the Trinis and then this shot of them just kind of highlights these interesting parallel journeys, thinking about how they started as Rita and Evil Green Ranger, and now White Ranger and Mistress Vile. It was just cool to see them fighting side by side. And then she winds up getting like curb stomped by Dark Spectre, who's angry that she betrayed him, but then is saved by Zed. And there is a really interesting dynamic there, as they have kind of set up or alluded to that they were romantically involved before, when they would have gotten married in the season three timeline. Uh, so I'm really interested to see where this goes. And it brings up this same situation where I feel like I'm on a fence again. Like on one hand, I'm really intrigued to see the boom take on certain events from the show because it's always a better version of it. But at the same time, like, I want to see them go completely off book because there's no reason to stay on book. You know, the casual audience doesn't care about the show beats like the hardcore fandom, and the casual audience is a bigger fandom, and I think a less annoying one, to be honest. So, I don't know, I'm mixed on that, but I'm admittedly interested to see Zed and Rita potentially team up for this and maybe for the next arc. Something else, that, kind of a side tangent, I would maybe like to see is because we do so many MMPR variants in general, it would be maybe cool if we do get to season three to see them slightly redesign the suits to line up with the ninja animals. I don't remember who it was, but I'll try to put a picture up if I find it, but somebody did kind of a what if design for that. I feel like if you stuck the designs really close to the symmetry of the helmets to make them still recognizable as core MMPR, but made them the different animals, that would be kind of cool. Anyway, that was a side tangent. Something else I forgot to mention when I was talking about Trini is this funny moment when uh, they're helping Tommy escape after Rita starts getting attacked and he's like, we have to save her. And I think somebody said, like, why? And Tommy says, of course, like, well, she helped me escape. And Trini just says, so? Or it's like, I just, I love comic Trini. She's so much better than the boring show version. Like, she's such a badass. It reminded me of that moment when she fought off against Kia, when Kia's like, are you, she does that Last Jedi moment of, are you here to save my soul? And she's like, no. Speaking of Kia, though, we do end off a cling, we do end off on a cliffhanger with her getting one of the power eggs, which will be interesting. And it also brought up something that is kind of funny that, you know, with the Draken team. I thought that there was going to maybe be some stories about them having to learn to work together, like some classic PR stuff. And you know what? Maybe there still will be. But right now, I kind of like that there's this really rogue team where they all have their own ambitions and stories, and they're not really working together at all. They just kind of all have these powers and are helping out. But yeah, I overall really liked this issue a lot. There was a lot of good stuff going on. Uh, I think good forward momentum in regards to interesting things happening, like Rita and Zed's alliance, uh, the stuff with the egg and Kia, but also, like I said, my favorite thing, too, is that they make time for those nice character moments to make the story feel grounded and make the story feel richer with the characters at play here. But what did you guys think of the issue? Let me know in the comments, as always. Until next time, don't forget to, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell to get notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.